Trig derivatives. So when it's time to take a derivative, so I haven't shown you the rule for sine. Some of you might know what it is. If you do, fantastic. Don't yell it out. How do we figure out derivative if we don't know the rule? You don't? You just wait for somebody to spoon feed it to you? Oh. Living the dream. All right. What happens if you're not living the dream and you actually want to get a derivative that you don't know? And you can't use the internet. How do we get all of our rules? We didn't go to the book and look at them. We made them. How did we make them? I know that was... We use the definition of the derivative. There we go, definition. So hopefully you remember definition. Limit h approaches zero of the difference quotient. <coughs> yes. yes, it was two quizzes ago. One quiz ago, actually. One quiz ago. Lim h approaches zero, sine x plus h minus sine x over h. All right. So we got the evil h in the denominator that we have to get rid of. Factoring, that's not going to save us. You can't factor the h out of the sine x plus h. That's not going to save us. Multiply by conjugate over conjugate. I don't think that's going to be very useful. There's no, usually you do that when there's square roots. No square roots here. What's our other trick? Add fractions with common, there's no fractions to add with common denominator, so that's out. All right, so all of our tools don't work. So remember, way back to last quarter, trigonometry class. What is sine x plus h? Does anybody remember? So it's the sum formula for sine. I know I gave you a cheat sheet, so therefore you didn't have to remember it at all. So let's pretend that you did. Oh, I already messed it up. So you really don't need any trig skills after this. There is something in common I could factor out. Sine. So the middle term's got no sine x in it, but the first last terms have sine x. So let's take that factor that sine x out. And we're left with cosine of h minus 1. There are hyperbolic cosine, sine, and all that stuff, but these are not the hyperbolic sine and cosine. This is just sine of the letter H, or the variable H, cosine of the letter H. All right. So I did factor out, but I also broke this fraction into two separate fractions added together. So I did two algebra steps at once. Um, why is the cosine and sine h. Oh, it should be cos x. Yes. All right, so that was just algebra. Now I'm going to uh, take the limit of both the two sums separately. This is the uh, sum rule for limits, or maybe we call them laws, sum law.
And let's do the limit on the right side first. So the limit on the right, so I see a cos x. Does the limit care about cosine of x, this limit over here? It's got h in it, so limit doesn't care about x. So I can move that outside the limit. All right, what's the limit of sine h over h as h approaches 0? One. That's 1. We've seen that before. So it's cos x times 1, or just cos x. All right, so that took care of the right side. Let's look at the left side now. This one on the left, at some point we went over this limit. I said it's a special limit. And I think we said it was zero. We flipped back like 15 pages in our notes. Let's see. I think it was at the beginning of our, somewhere near the beginning of our limits. The special limits. Probably in our trig limits. Was that you? You saw it. Mm, all right. So one of you found the special limit. So it should be in all. What's the, is that the trig limit section? Uh, it's in two four. Two four. All right. So from 2.4, this limit right here, that part approaches zero. Of course, sine x is just the limit doesn't care about sine x, but the limit of that second part is zero. So we get zero plus cos x, which is just cos x, and this is ddx of sine x. So now you know derivative of sine is cosine, and you also know why. So we just use the definition. So did you know why before? <coughs> Because you believe somebody who told it to you? <coughs> All right. Everything I know is somebody told No. You know now why the derivative is sine is cosine. So there's at least one thing you know. And we did the, uh, all those rules in this last week. <coughs> so you know those for sure, too. All right, we'll do the same thing for cosine. So lim h approaches 0, cos x plus h minus cos x over h. And I will attempt to write down the sum formula for cosine. We used a and b back in the day. Cos a, cos b minus sine a, sine b. So use this sum formula right here for cosine. Of course, you got x and h, not a and b, and see what you're made of. You got to do a little bit of algebra. You'll factor one thing, split it into two fractions, and see if you can uh, get it out to two limits that you know about. And they're probably going to be the special trig limits, very similar to the ones that we just looked at. So I'll give you a minute right now to see what you can do. So expand it out and then factor it carefully. It's going to be very similar to what we just did.
Any questions on this right here? So this is negative sine x uh, because that negative snuck in from the sum formula for cosine uses a minus in the middle. So that's why it's negative. And let's graph sine and cosine. I'm just going to go one period for each. So we're going to go 0 to 2 pi. So I'll just start out with the sine function. Oh, it's beautiful. I'll go cosine and uh, let me label this. Cosine is going to be in blue. Starts 1, ends at 1. Negative 1 in between. X intercept, X intercept. Go. Oh. Good enough. <coughs> so we just saw the derivative of, let's see, start the regular one. Derivative of sine equals cosine. So down here, the derivative of the black function is the blue function. Derivative of sine is cosine. So what that means, the slope of sine is the y value of cosine. So I'll mark this up with some red, the slope of sine. So what is the slope right here? So right here, what is the numerical slope? One. So that slope right there is actually exactly 1. What is the slope up here? It should be obvious. Zero. 0. What is the cosine value of, this is pi over 2, cosine value is 0 right there. <coughs> and if I go halfway in between, so pi over 4. So what is that slope? That is exactly the y value of the cosine function. I think it's 1 over square root 2, or square root 2 over 2 if you're a rationalizing person. And you would use the x coordinate to find, so if you have the slope of the, if you're looking for the slope of the y. Yeah, there's, so I, I looked at three different x coordinates in the last minute or so. So we did 0 first, pi over 2, and now we're doing pi over 4. Because in the homework, there's a couple, well, not even with this, but just different functions where you're using the points. So you can use the x to find the y for the Yeah, so, so anywhere you're going on the sine function, wherever your slope is, even at some value that we don't really know much about, I can see the slope is the y value of the cosine function. So let me undo all this red. Now, unfortunately, the uh, derivative of cosine is negative sine. So if I want to, let's see, derivative of cosine is negative sine. Without redrawing a negative sine graph, I'll just, let's go right at zero right here. So I see the slope looks something like that. Now, the derivative is negative sine, so it's negative the y value I just wrote down. So this is positive one, but we need to make a negative, so it would be negative one. So the slope would be negative one right there. And you can go any, any point here. You know, what's our slope right here? It'll be the negative of that y value I just put up there. So whatever that negative value is. So that is how sine and cosine are related in terms of their calculus relationships right there. Now in terms of memorizing, it's a little tricky because you just kind of have to know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Like that's where the negative jumps in. Derivative of sine is regular cosine. So that you just, you just have to either memorize that, or if you forget it, uh, you could derive it in about one or two minutes, as long as you know the sum formula. Hopefully you won't have to derive it. That's going to waste about two minutes on your quiz, even if you can do it the right way. Uh, maybe a faster way is graph them both and figure out which one is the graph of the other's derivative. And the other one will be the graph of the negative derivative. All right. 
Instead, what I recommend you do is just memorize what's in the boxes. That usually works a little better. So what do you think we're going to do next? Very good. We're going to do tangent. All right, there are a few ways to do this. We could do it definition, and we have our, let's see, our sum formula for tangent. So tangent A plus B, whatever it is, like 1 minus tangent A times tangent B over something with tangent squared in it. So we could go that route. What else can we do? So I could go definition, but I know a little bit about derivative of sine and cosine. So you could do derivative of sine over derivative of cosine. Almost. So we're going to write dx <coughs> All right, so Why is this not derivative sine divided by derivative of cosine? Quotient rule. Quotient rule. It's not this easy. You don't get to just take derivative numerator and denominator on a fraction. All right, so do not do this. So let's write down the proper quotient rule that I'm sure you didn't forget. Maybe it shows up on a quiz today. It'll definitely show up on your midterm. There's a quotient rule. <laughs> so it's the derivative of numerator times denominator minus numerator times derivative denominator divided by denominator squared. So this is a quotient rule. Right, this one I just said because I said so. I didn't prove why. So go ahead, do quotient rule here. You know derivative sine, you know derivative of cosine. Just did it three minutes ago. You got both of those. <coughs> That's about all you need. So I didn't do any trig there. That was all calculus. <coughs> Questions on that? All right, here's the worst thing you could do. Cancel out cosine squared. Why is that very, very wrong? Probably at some point I talked about this. If I cancel out my twos, that is equal to one. No. Would that be equal to one half? Be equal to three halves. All right. So one's not equal to three halves. All right. So you can uh, cancel some things, but you don't cancel addition with division. You cancel multiplication with division. So you better not cancel these out. All right. What about trigonometry? Can I use here? Yep, so they add up to be 1. And of course, 
1 over cosine is secant. So this is secant times secant or secant squared. Oh, not cosine. That was tangent. Okay, what's up next? Just three more functions we get to knock out. Cotangent. So we got, doesn't matter the order we do them, let's just go to cotangent because it's super similar. You won't have to think too hard. <coughs> so cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so it's cos over sine. You know the quotient rule. We just used it seconds ago. So you can apply it right now. You should get some cos squared plus sine squared cancellation, but you have to be a little careful this time. You may have an extra negative sign hanging around. So be a little careful when you factor. It'll feel almost exactly the same as the last one. Any calculus, algebra, trig questions? The calculus part is probably the easiest of this. If you know the quotient rule, you, there's no try, there's only do. You just have to apply it carefully. Make sure you know u and v. Algebra is a little tricky because it was minus sine squared minus cosine squared. So that's going to be negative 1, not positive 1. All right, so we got cotangent. Let's go on to secant. So we didn't really do the sum difference formula for secant. What else can we do for secant to get the derivative? We 
we know derivative of sine and cosine. How do we relate this back to sine or cosine? 1 over cosine. So we got 1 derivative of 1 times cos minus 1 times cos derivative divided by cos squared. What's the derivative of a number? Zero. zero. So derivative of 1 is going to be 0. So the first term cancels out to zero. We get negative, negative sine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's positive sine. And I just wrote the cos squared as cos times cos, like this. Because what I'm about to do is sine over cosine is tangent, and one over cosine is secant. So this is tangent times secant. For some reason, the uh, everywhere I've seen it written, secant's always appearing first. So we'll write it as secant tangent. That's the way most people have written it and remembered it. So derivative of secant is secant tangent. And now you know why. Last up, we're going to go cosecant. Oh, all right. So I'll just write this down. So that's good practice. We'll do it in class, but we'll do it quickly in class tomorrow. It's a good one to go and practice.